Hey guys, it's John from John's DIY Playground, coming to you from the darkness of my shop today to show you something about a motion sensor and how to get it to work with Home Assistant, because the idea is I want to fire up my little sensor I'm about to show you, and then once I make motion, it's going to actually turn on my shop lights, like that. It's magic, huh? But um, it's very easy to do. Just one component here, motion sensor, PIR sensor they call it. And in this case, an ESP32. It can also be an ESP8266. I'll go over the components and the setup, and we'll show you how to write the home automation for a home assistant. So let's get started. For this how-to, I've actually broken the video up into five different parts. And you'll be able to jump to any one of these five parts if you look in the info box below. There'll be links to jump to each section. So first part, we're actually going to download a add-on called ESP Home for Home Assistant and install it in our system. Then we will hook up the sensor hardware, hook up the actual sensor to our MCU. Then we'll actually program the motion sensor and set up the Wi-Fi so it works with our home automation system. We'll configure Home Assistant and get the sensor showing up on our home screen. And then we'll actually create an automation to turn on the light. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is get the ESP Home add-on in our Home Assistant. You can see I already have it in mine, um, but it is an add-on, and it's a little tricky to find. So if you scroll down, you may not show it right away, but scroll all the way down on the left side and find the Supervisor button and choose that. And if you go to the add-on store, you'll see in the repositories, if you try to search on ESP Home, it's not going to find it. So what you have to do is actually add the repository because it's in a separate repository. And the repository address is here. It's https slash slash github.com slash ESP home slash Hasio. So if you hit that and hit add, it'll add it to the number of repositories it's looking for. And then you'll see ESP home now in here. So click on that. And then what you'll see is something like this. And instead of uninstall, like I have, since I already have it, click the install and let that run until it's all set and ready to go. To verify it's ready to go, you'll see a green circle here to show that it's up and running. If not, there might be a, a need to manually start it. In that case, you'll see something called start here, and then that'll turn green. Okay, so that is all we need to do to get the ESP Home add-on set up. Here in part two, we're going to hook up the sensor hardware. So I'd like to talk for a moment about the actual PIR sensor itself. Um, there are a couple of different PIR sensor hardwares out there in the market today. Um, it depends um, which version of the hardware you have as to far as how the functionality looks. So what this picture is saying here, minus this white, the white dome is removed. If the potentiometer, this little screw adjuster has a 105 stamped on it, then you'll have a timing range from a half second to up to 200 seconds. Um, alternatively, there is another one. Um, I'm sorry, I screwed this up, but potentiometer, if it's stamped with um, 473, you'll have an output timing from five seconds to only 18 seconds maximum. Um, and the timer will continue um, in this particular set of hardware until the last motion is detected. So you'll get 18 seconds, but if it sees motion at 17 seconds, the, re the counter starts again and it's going to count another 18 seconds off. So that's one thing to know. And then the other knob is for sensitivity. And you can see for sensitivity, as you turn it more to the left, you're increasing the range or how far out it'll look. If you turn it more to the right, that closes down the sensitivity and it becomes less sensitive. So again, on the left side, it depends. This is your timing one, but it's depending on what is stamped on the potentiometer, either the 105 or 473. Okay, so the next thing is regarding the ESP32 or 8266 you're using. Um, this is a general illustration of how we're gonna hook it up. It only takes three wires. You've got a power, red, uh, ground, black, and the signal wire, which is a yellow. Um, the yellow wire we're trying to hook to pin D13 or digital 13. Um, you might see it stamped on the board as a 13 or it might be called out as GPIO 13. 
um, you need to check your board because there's many different versions of this stuff and each board is different so in fact while I'm showing the three wires being lined up on the first three pins of this board on the board that I have today I'm actually using the three pins here on my board my five volts is down here at the first pin and then three pins up you've got the actual digital 13 and then the ground pin here so let me show you what that looks like in real life this is my ESP 32 and as you could see on the diagram but now in real life my 5 volt pin is here and then you can see the digital 13 is here and then the ground is here so I got my three wires there's uh, red black and yellow they have female ends on both sides so I can hook up the sensor so it's really easy um, I'm just gonna grab the red wire show this one um, you just push it on there it's kind of hard for me to do in the looking through my camera but just like that Now that we have our hardware hooked up and ready to go, it's time to program in part three here. Now, I wanted to illustrate one other thing before I show you my setup, um, and it's something that always threw me off when I was doing this at first, was I was taking my sensor, my ESP32, and I was hooking it directly to my PC that I was browsing Home Assistant on, and that's not the right way to use the ESP Home program. You actually have to come over to your Raspberry Pi if that's how you're running Home Assistant and plug into the USB port there. If you try to plug it into your PC it's not going to work so make sure you plug it into your Raspberry Pi and then we'll get started on opening up the ESP Home add-on. Now that we have our sensor hooked to our Home Assistant, we have to enable our sensor or MCU to accept software programming and get it into programming mode. To do that, push and hold down the boot button with one finger, and then while holding that button down, temporarily push and hit the EN button and release it. Then after you release the EN button, then let go of the boot button, and that'll put it into the firmware programming mode. What we need to do now is go back over to our ESP Home add-on. You can either click on it here or you can actually go into the supervisor again and you can click on it here too. Now one thing that's very important we need to do since we've plugged into the USB port on our Home Assistant uh, Raspberry Pi is we need to restart ESP Home. That's going to help the ESP Home add-on look at the USB ports again and check for live hardware that's sitting there ready to be programmed. You'll have to wait a couple seconds and then try opening the web UI. If you get a bad gateway or some other error message, just wait a few more seconds and then click the open UI. So you might see this OTA by default over the air. We can only use over the air programming after the first programming, but it's very cool once you have that. Um, pull down this here and you should see something like this that shows you do have a USB port now active. We're going to program that way and we're going to create a new item. There is a wizard for this and I followed the wizard um, just calling it let's say uh, motion sensor oops no spaces I forgot about that haven't done this in a while and must be a lowercase too, oh my goodness. And it's going to ask what kind of ESP we have. We have an ESP32. Um, so under 32, we can use this generic here. Um, it might take some trial and error to get it to work, but um, this one I know works with my particular hardware. It's gonna ask about over the air um, SSIDs and passwords. So I'm gonna break the video right here and not show this part. I got my Wi-Fi credentials in, hit the next button, and now we're here at the done part. But we're not done, we're just done with the wizard. One thing to point out that's very important is see the ESP Home Index of list of supported sensors and devices. So if I click on that, that's gonna open up another window. And this is a guide, and it'll show you all kinds of different devices you can use with your ESP32 or ESP8266. There are a ton of them, and it's awesome. Um, I use the temperature sensors a lot, the motion sensors, 
I'm actually using this ultrasonic sensor for a sump pit video I did. You can check that out on my channel as well. What we're looking for here today is a PIR sensor. So I will just search on PIR. And if you click on that, it tells you about our sensor and kind of goes through some of the things I talked about. But most importantly, it gives you some sample code that we need to put into our sketch before we upload it. So I am going to highlight this oops, and copy it. All right, and then we come back over and we'll hit submit to finish our steps. It's gonna ask us to select an upload port. And again, we want the USB port. We find our motion sensor code. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to hit edit, and I need to change something real quick. I'll be back in one second. I hit the edit button and it opens up this text editor and it shows the code that we're going to be using for our device. Um, I've already changed something here in the Wi-Fi section. You can see I'm using something called secrets. Um, there is a secrets file where you can keep all of your usernames and passwords in a separate location so that you are if you ever are doing things like this and showing code, you don't have to reveal your password. So I actually have a secret that I use for my wireless router's password. And same thing with the fallback password. The fallback is used if you can't get a regular connection to your router, then your sensor actually becomes an access point. So you could get to it through Wi-Fi and try to modify it. Now I mentioned that code that we took from the previous screen on the ESP Home website. We need to introduce that into this code before we upload. So I'm going to paste it here. And I actually took the liberty already to change the pin number. Since we are using pin 13 on our sensor, um, we need to identify it there. So um, you can also change the name here. I could call this motion sensor. You don't have to be case sensitive. We're all with no spaces in this case. And basically we're done. We can upload now. I'm gonna hit save and then I'm going to hit upload and it's going to run through a whole bunch of compiling and uh, sensing on your device to see what kind of ESP it is. You can see it's found it here. Uh, this compilation process will take a little bit of time but you can see things are going well and I'll come back when this thing is finished. After about three or four minutes you'll actually get to this screen um, in the compilation screen and see success lots of green it's connecting to my uh, router I've got a nice strong signal and we can see the motion sensor is the host name um, GPIO sensor PIO motion sensor the name we use there and on pin 13 is the input it's all looking good so next we're gonna move to part 4 and configure it to work with our home assistant I just clicked away from the code window so that I could see a list of our devices. And here our motion sensor we can see is online, which is great. And even better news is down here in notifications, you can see there's a one indicating something is new to check out. So when I click on it, it says a new device has been discovered. We discovered a new device, check it out. So let's click on that. And it discovered ESP home motion sensor. So great, it's already auto detecting it. Let's click on configure. It'll say, do you want to add it to Home Assistant? Yes, we do. And success, it's asking some basic information about the motion sensor, like an area. I'm going to assign it to my basement since it's down in my workshop and then hit finish. Okay, so it's in there. I can look in um, entities and it'll be in a list of the entities here. Um, but more importantly, we want to go to our home screen and we are going to add uh, new, uh, let's say, entity card. You do that by clicking here on the plus, and we're going to go in entity card. I'm going to call this motion sensor demo, and it tries to anticipate what it thinks should be in here, but um, I don't like when it does that. What I'm going to do is look for just type on motion. Um, and it's right here, PIR motion sensor. And if I hit save, you can see it's created a new card and it's detecting motion right now at the moment. My old sensor that I did in the original part of this video is no longer available because it's been reprogrammed. It's now this motion sensor. So in theory, I could remove this by hitting edit and I can just hit this as an X and save it. And now you can see it's reconfigured the screen again. So that part, the old one is gone, the new one's here. 
Next we're going to move on to part 5 and we're going to show you how to do the automation. We're going to create the automations now to turn on our shop lights and turn them off. Um, to do that you come down into the home assistant scroll down until you see configuration and then in configuration scroll down until you see automations. Once you're in the automations area you can click on the plus in the lower right side to create a new one. There is a wizard here but I'm not having really good luck with it so I just skipped that part and you can call it um, turn on shop light demo and I have some highlight some uh, guidance for you guys on what to put in these areas um, because there is a couple of little key things to know and for triggers I'm going to put in the state and you'll see that in a second the entity will be our sensor that we're going to trigger off of and when it turns on is the state change we want so the one thing I did discover over um, trial and error is on is case sensitive so you must use uh, little o little n same thing with off small no no uppercase or it won't work so keep that in mind when you're writing your automations and um, you'll have good success so let me show you this real quick so again the device on our trigger we're actually looking for a change of state and so then the entity that we're going to look for is our binary sensor which is the pir sensor here and changing to the state on again lowercase only and then actions you want to check device and my device is a Tasmoda it's a reprogrammed smart switch um, you should look up Tasmodas when you have a chance to go down that rabbit hole too highly recommend it and turn on the shop lights is what I want I'm going to save that automation so it's going to be called something like automation turn on shop light demo let's go back to the home screen now and I'm going to edit this and you don't have to do this part I mean I just like to see it here um, so you can quickly flip it on and off but you could always just leave it in your automation screens this this is an extra step um, let me find it here under automations we called it shop power demo Sorry, it's taking a little bit of time here. It's right here. Okay, so I hit save. And now my lights are actually up here. I put those on the screen as well. So I can turn, um, oh, I'm sorry, those are the automations. The lights are right here. Um, so if this switch automatically moves by itself. When I put motion in front of my sensor, that means it's working for turning on the shop light. So let me introduce some motion. And there you go, you can see it turned on the shop light switch here automatically. So those have come on by themselves. Similarly, you can write another demo um, automation to turn the light off so that when the state of the sensor goes back to clear, it senses that off and that will turn off the light for you as well. So if you want that feature, you can have that. Also, if you don't want that, you can put into your automation like an amount of time to delay by and that would turn the light off. So there's multiple ways to do it. So that's the demo for today. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and hit like. Also, please subscribe to my videos so you know when the new ones come out, and that also helps my channel. And appreciate your guys' time, and thanks for watching. This is John from John's DIY Playground. Have a great day.